The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. You go to the tomb of Karl Marx, founder of atheistic communism, in London. You know that there is a body in that tomb. If you go to the tomb of Friedrich Nietzsche, the famous 19th century German atheist, go to his tomb, you know there is a body in that tomb. Go to the tomb of Mohammed in Saudi Arabia. There is a body there. Go to the tomb of the Buddha in the Far East. There is a body in that tomb. But go to the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth in Jerusalem. And for 2,000 years, we say confidently, there is no body there. There's no one there. Because as we proclaim, we say he is risen. He is risen. He is not here. I was able to visit once the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which contains the actual Holy Sepulchre, the actual tomb of Christ. It's been cut out of the hill in which it was originally hewn. It's now kind of decorated in this beautiful way, but it's still preserved, the very slab on which our Lord was laid, his body was laid. And right there, you see the line from the gospel, right above that slab, and it says, he is not here, he is risen. I was there on a pilgrimage for seminarians, those who are preparing for the priesthood. And in this group, it was amazing, we had the opportunity every single night at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, they allow 10 people to stay in the church overnight. So they, they close the doors, this great ceremony every single night, but 10 people, in addition to the, the various groups of monks that pray all throughout the night there, 10 lay people get to, to be in the church all night long. And I got to be one of those 10 
couple of rules. First, if, if a group is using the actual sepulcher itself, you're not allowed to pray there. But any other time, you can. And you're not allowed to fall asleep. Otherwise, a monk will come up to you and poke you. <laughs> Say, wake up. <laughs> Those are the two rules. So I was able to spend for over an hour by myself in the actual holy sepulcher. It's amazing. One of those greatest moments of my life. This group of seminarians, there's a seminarian from the diocese of, uh, the Archdiocese of New York. Now he's a priest of the Archdiocese of New York. He was doing his kind of holy hour within the holy sepulcher, the actual tomb. And it's a very small space. You're very cramped. You, you kneel down right by this slab, again, that, which our Lord was laid. And so he was kind of, you know, readjusting his feet and his foot kicked something, something metallic. He reached down and picked up what was a satanic medallion that someone earlier in the day had left deliberately within the, the tomb of our Lord. So he picked up this medallion, he went out, to, out of the tomb, and he went to one of the priests who were serving there, this old bearded priest, and he handed the medallion to him. The priest took it, said nothing. He went to the sacristy, came out with a pair of pliers about 30 seconds later, and said, Satan has no power here. And he snapped the medallion. Satan has no power here. Wherever the risen Christ is present, Satan has no power there. And I pray that that is what this church is right now. Satan should have no place here because we are renewing today our belief, our faith in the risen Lord. We are recommitting ourselves to the, his glorious resurrection. Whoever Christ, the risen Christ, reigns in a soul who is in the state of sanctifying grace, Satan has no power there. So in just a few moments, we will do exactly that. We will make our baptismal promises, renew our baptismal promises. I will ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? And I hope that you say, I do, I do, I do. And I'll ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I hope you say, I do. But if you say, I do, I want you to really mean it. I want you to think of what you are saying. Because if you say that, don't just do it because your neighbor is saying it next to you. Don't do it because this is what we do at Easter time. Say it from the deepest conviction of who you are as a baptized member of the church. And you say, yes, this is who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I'm willing to even die for if Christ were to ask me to do so. I do, I do, I do. When you say those words, what else are you saying? You're saying, I intend, yes, to recommit myself to our risen Lord, not just today, but every single Sunday here at Holy Mass. We celebrate his resurrection every Sunday, every holy day of obligation. You say, I'm going to be there. You recommit yourself to the sacrament of confession. You say, I want Satan to have no power in my life, and so I confess my sins. You commit yourself to a life of prayer, you recommit yourself to the whole sacramental right, practice of the church, especially good, holy receptions of our Lord in Holy Communion. Because when our Lord in, in the Eucharist comes to us, he, it is the risen body of Christ. You receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity, the risen body of Christ into your body. And that is preparing you for resurrection. When Christ comes again, if you die in friendship with him, when he comes again, he calls from the tombs all who have died. It will be by the power of your receptions of Holy Communion, when you had the risen body of Christ within your body, 
that Christ will allow your mortal body to rise once again. Again, don't say these words lightly. Don't make these promises lightly. People make promises all the time and they break them. When you stand in just a few minutes and you speak these, speak it from the depths of your heart and say, things will be different. I recommit myself completely to the Lord. I give myself to his Eucharistic risen body so that one day I too may rise gloriously with him and reign with him forever in heaven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.